Hi, this is Ted B with uh, forums such as uh, Audio Circle and Computer Audio File. And I've been asked to do uh, some beginner videos on the great uh, software player called J River Media Center 19. Uh, this is video number one, which we will call the intro video. Um, it's a, a great name, isn't it? But anyway, it's going to deal with the introduction of the basic product. Um, how you uh, can see how it's installed and goes from a trial to a registered copy should you want to buy it. Uh, how to import music from your hard drives and various places within your environment such as a, a NAS. Uh, how to uh, set up your output. In most cases the audience that's watching this, listening to this, uh, will have uh, some sort of uh, high resolution DAC that plays both 24-bit music as well as DSD possibly. So I will um, show how you set up a DAC with uh, the, the drivers that are installed on your computer. Um, and then finally in this video we will talk about how to uh, sync this up with JRemote. JRemote happens to be a third-party application on the iPad but it is very tightly integrated. Looks like it was built by Jerry River. And as I said the, the integration is uh, not only tight, but you can actually customize, and I'll talk about that in the next video uh, or video coming up, to customize the, the look and feel and uh, the views that you see in JRiver and then uh, import those views into JRemote so that when you're sitting at your listening position, you've got uh, much more flexibility and customize ability uh, as you're browsing music. All right, so some basics. Um, this happens to be J River Media Center 19 for Windows, and it happens to be sitting on um, my home office desktop. This is not my main rig. Uh, so you see down here, even on my desktop, I've got 3.6 terabytes of, of uh, data. 44,000 songs are out here. Um, but that's not nearly what I have because my main rig um, has a, quite a bit more than that, as well as uh, multi-channel music. Uh, those are, are various folders that I don't have this version of JRiver uh, pointed toward and therefore um, it's not keeping them in sync and monitoring them either. All right, so and JRiver uh, Media Center 19 um, is the latest version in a long evolution of this great product. Um, just recently over the past year they've come out with a product for the Mac OS X operating system and uh, pretty soon, certainly at probably early 2014, they will have uh, the same type of product for uh, the Linux uh, operating system. So um, they're really, you know, pushing the product ahead. Um, I'm running specifically on Build 67. All that means is is that uh, there are daily or or every every few days there are builds that are done, and um, every few builds are then released to into production. Uh, then there are a few builds that are done for, for beta purposes. Um, so you can, in the uh, menu toolbar I'll show you in a minute, uh, manage through that. You can say, I'd like to keep uh, the latest, I'd like to keep the most stable, or in some cases myself, I've been a beta tester for them, although I haven't done a lot of that recently. Um, on the left side of the screen, uh, basically are your views. Uh, the views, and we're going to only talk about audio. J River Media Center can do a lot. It can do audio, video. A lot of people are using it to as a DVR for uh, television and movies, um, store images, documents, uh, so on and so forth. These videos are simply going to be about how to set it up to be an audio file playback uh, player on, again, your Windows, Mac, or soon Linux uh, machines. So we, uh, we're going to simply talk about audio. These are views into my library. Uh, this is, happens to be a customized view to show all the 24-bit music I have, the DSD 128 and DSD music I have, uh, WAV files, blah, blah, blah. And I'll show you in another video how to build them and import them into JRemote. Um, but first, uh, you have to install it, obviously. And typically, most users install it as a trial download it from the JRiver site, um, and then it's fully functional for a number of days. I believe it's 30 days. I should know that. Uh, maybe it's 15. I'm sorry. And uh, But in the help menu here, there will be a 
menu item that is called uh, license info. And uh, that is when it, that tells you how many days you have left in your trial. And when you decide you want to buy J River, um, that is where you put your product key. Um, mine happens to be registered to me, of course, because I bought it. But this is where you would put your product key and, and turn it into a registered product. That's as simple as it gets. Um, they give you 10 product keys per year, which means you can install uh, J River on up to 10, and in my case, Windows platforms. Um, that should be enough. Uh, the reason that it's 10 and not two or three, I mean, it's, let's be reasonable, um, is the fact that you would might need a new product key if you were to upgrade your operating system or change your operating system and you're going to reinstall it. So uh, uh, if you need more than that, if you have a number of PCs in your house and um, you, you've done a number of installs uh, with different operating systems, uh, they will send you more, but I can't imagine uh, needing more than 10. So anyway, it's, it's basically one license and you can put it on uh, as many Windows products that you own um, as you need. Uh, in future videos, we'll also talk about how they share the same libraries or that you can have multiple libraries and so on. But again, this is very basic. So you install it, you eventually buy it, it becomes licensed to you. Um, the first thing you'll want to do then is to import your music. Now, my music happens to sit out on a NAS, on a Synology NAS, um, and I have that NAS which happens in this case be called TED Dis Disk Station. Say that three times. Um, I have it mapped to my home office computer here, my Windows desktop, as Disk R and Disk T. So those are two different pieces of my NAS. One's called Export, one's called PC Music. Export is specifically the uh, disk are the disk drive that I have pointed to J River, and I'll show you that in a minute. So these are large directories of various files. I, I have them categorized this way. Some people have them categorized by genre or even by, by name. But let's take Lossless Music, which is basically Red Book. Um, within there, I have all of my albums stored, um, in some cases uh, in very cryptic uh messages, cryptic uh, formats, but in, in some cases I've gotten a little better at, um, at storing them uh, and identifying them. But what I am very good at um, and is important, I think, when you import music and when you, frankly, when you rip your music, is to make sure that you're using a naming convention uh, that has track names, the artist name, the album name, and the song name. doesn't necessarily have to be in that order. But that allows for these tags from these FLAC files, even WAV files, it allows for these tags to be much uh, uh, imported into products like JRiver much easier. And you'll see here uh, later that when you need to do tagging and some tags are missing, uh, JRiver will actually take that information from your file name if your file name is smart enough. So I would recommend everybody, um, when they're whatever they're using to rip their music, whether it's a DB power amp or EAC or if it's their DVD player they're using DVD audio extractor whatever to set it up uh, into some sort of standard that includes track number so that you can make sure that as your uh, albums are being imported the tracks are in the right order um, otherwise they would typically be in alphabetical order and often then it's difficult um, to tag them if you're tagging them from either external sources or uh, copy and pasting and so on and we'll get into that later but anyway that is where my music comes from and I'll show you um, how you import so go to file by the way the view that you're looking at here um, is a uh, compressed view because I wanted to make sure that everything on the screen was easy to read from a video uh, J River is actually much larger than this as you'll see uh, I have to scroll to get to places. Uh, usually, I look at J River as uh, <clears throat> something that is more like about, uh, let's see here, more like about this size um, so that I can get to everything. But I thought that that would be too small 
uh, a font for this video. So uh, never mind the fact that we're going to have to move the mouse around to move to things. That's typically not the case. All right. Anyway, go to File, Library. That's what that's what uh, J River calls um, their collection of music, a library. And we go to Import. Import simply means let me go find all the music that is out there. You can either import a single folder, um, but most people, like myself, do something called Configure Auto Import. And it's exactly as it says. You provide a list of folders, and by folders I mean typically large directories, that the program will automatically stay synchronized with, meaning it will manage it and it will monitor it 24-7. And when you make changes to your uh, music files, you add to your directories, blah, 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 um, they will automatically be added to JRiver. You do not have to be manually putting in every time you add music to your library and vice versa should you delete music out of your library because you just have too many Miles Davis's kind of blue and I say that because they just released another one today um, you might not want to keep your 15 versions and knock that down to 8 um, J River will manage that for you and delete out what uh, it doesn't see as a music file alright so you go into configure auto import um, and then you come up here, and these are the folders right now that I am asking JRiver to monitor, to watch, as it says. Um, and you just say add, and you browse out there, and you browse to your different... You can have some on your NAS, you could have some on internal hard drives, you could have some on a USB drive. Um, it will go out and find these and, um, in, and import them automatically into JRiver. Now, here's another reason why I like to map my NAS drives to JRiver is because the path name is a lot shorter. Um, it would be a lot longer path name if you had all of the network name um, in the uh, uh, in the path name. Uh, but instead, the path name for this folder is r slash dsd128 dsf. Um, and that is a, a, another reason that I think that mapping your drives uh, plus the fact that you wouldn't have to constantly open and close them and, and possibly password protect them if they were out on the network. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to add any more folders, but this is where, um, for example, um, I have a multi-channel folder that is out there, but this version, this uh, implementation of JRiver on my home office computer uh, does not uh, import that folder and does not monitor it because this is a stereo DAC, not like the uh, DACs that I have in the main rig that include both stereo and multi-channel. So anyway, so that is what it is monitoring daily, and um, that's as easy as it, as it gets. You hit the finish button, um, and then you'll see in this action window, which can do many, many things, you'll see things starting to be imported. And eventually when it's done importing, it will tell you, it will, it will give you a report of those files that it imported, those files for whatever reason that it couldn't import, um, and that's typically non-music files, um, or those files that may have had a, a name that is a title and a name that is too long that they couldn't import as well, because uh, Windows has some restrictions, 256 characters, I believe, in some Windows implementations that it won't, uh, that it won't import. All right, so we've imported music, we've bought the product, um, we've got the standard audio views that include album, artist, files, genres, panes, uh, and uh, recent albums, which are albums that you just uh, imported, in other words, by time, imported recently. Uh, something silly called 3D albums. It's, I, I don't use it. Um, now, how do you get it to play back? So the, the two main menu items that you will use initially when you're playing JRiver will be file because you're going to be importing some things um, and will be tools, especially tools options. Tools options is where all of the setup is done. And in this case, we're going to deal uh, with in this video with audio and media network. So under audio, uh, here's your first step. This is your audio device. In my case, I've had this JRiver talk to many, many different DACs. Right now, it is connected to my MyTech Stereo 192 DSD DAC. 
and it's connected with an ASIO driver. That's a Windows driver that can talk to DSD directly. Um, there are, I also have a FireWire driver, blah, blah, blah. If it was not an ASIO driver, um, something like Wasapi or kernel streaming, then you would do something differently in the next step. And the next step, if you are a DSD music listener and your DAC is DSD capable, you would want to set bit streaming for custom and you would want to either use DSD or what's called DOP or DSD over PCM. If you have an ASIO driver, you use DSD. Any other driver, as well as any driver on the Mac, you would use DOP. So I am doing an ASIO driver, therefore I uh, say bitstream in, D in DSD. So if you're playing back native DSD music, um, that is called bitstreaming because that format requires a bitstream. Um, and you're doing uh, one of the native DSD. Uh, they're both native, but this is straight DSD or DSD over PCM, which is really packing DSD within a, uh, a 16176 um, format. All right, so uh, that's it to really set up your dash. But there are a few other settings that uh, that I want to make sure that I get across that, that should be done. Um, in the audio setup, and that is make sure that for switching tracks, you've got it set to gapless. Um, yeah, most, if not all, formats that J River supports support gapless, and you, of course, would want to make sure that classical music, Pink Floyd, and Abbey Road are not listen are listened to gapless and not with uh, gaps in between the tracks if they're not intended. So gapless is something that you want to set. I would also set the the seek. A stop, seek, and skip uh, section uh, for smooth, intermediate, or smooth, immediate, and fast. You want the stop to be immediate. You can set these for all kinds of fade outs and make it sound like, you know, you're running a DJ turntable system, but you probably don't want to do that. Um, and that's really the the main changes in the in the audio piece. Um, okay, so when you're done, then you just say save those uh, settings. Uh, the, the other piece I want to uh, bring up in this video uh, to, to, to close it out is, um, all right, so now you've got your music, you've got uh, an output device that works, and uh, now you're going to be sitting down um, in your listening position, and you'd like to be able to browse. So uh, one of the things that River brings uh, to the table is, as I said, a wonderful third-party uh, iPad app called JRemote. How does J River talk to J Remote? We go back to tools, and we go to something called Media Network. And the first time you go in, Media Network will ask, you know, use you will you will check off use Media Network to share this library. And by the way, this also allows uh, J River to be a DLNA a DLNA uh, giver client, if you will. And then uh, you will be given an access key. So this access key will then be input. It, it is case sensitive. And uh, let me show you what that looks like in J Remote. So you go to J Remote, you set you you hit your setup key. Uh, here are the various uh, servers that have talked to my J Remote in the past. Add a new J Remote Media Center server, uh, and then you can connect one of two ways. You can connect with your access key or with your IP address. Well, it's silly. Just use your access key. The next screen will tell you, enter the key, uh, hit OK, and you're connected. And it's as easy as that. And um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great set of products. Uh, uh, J Remote, talking to J River, um, makes browsing, I, I think it's a, a lot better than, um, than uh, Apple's uh, uh, remote app, which is good, but not great. Um, I think it's a lot better than Linux's MPAD and other GUI clients that uh, that are built out there. Um, obviously, I'm a fan. Um, I don't mean this to be a commercial, but it really is a benefit when using J River to be able to use uh, the J Remote product. All right, so that's it. I went over my time. I wanted to make this 15 minutes. I'm up to 20. Um, I'm going to uh, sign off now. Um, the next video that will be uh, be developed here in the next day or so will be tagging. And that will be tagging techniques, filling tags from file information, as I said, if you have your 
uh, file names uh, done correctly. Uh, a, a new capability called tag pasting, where you can take a whole album's worth of tags and copy and paste it onto, let's say, maybe the high-res version that didn't come across with tags, which is often the case with DVD audio or, or ripping DSD. And then some mass tagging ideas where you can add suffixes to, uh, let's say, a whole genre of albums or a whole format of albums that you want to add a suffix to, such as DSD or 24-bit, so they're easier to search on and, and differentiate from your Redbook version. So uh, until then, uh, enjoy music, and uh, we'll see you later.